Welcome back to another episode of Sound 101. I'm Andrew from Deity Microphones, and sitting next to me is Deity Steve. Hey, Andrew. Now, because Deity Steve is in the house, that means this is mailbag. Well, on these mailbag episodes, the first question that we always answer means that that person is going to win a VLOV. So, Steve, who is winning a VLOV this week? All right, Andrew. First question comes from Matthew De Leon, which also means Matthew wins a VLOV. Congratulations, Matthew. Question is, what strategies do you guys recommend for getting good sound for documentary films without making subjects intimidated by a big boom pole? This would be for small interviews with random passersby where there's not going to be time for a lot of setup. I totally get why this can be intimidating. If you have an extended boom pole, big giant dead cat, you're sitting there, you're all like this. Of course you're gonna intimidate people. So here's my suggestion. Don't extend your boom pole all 12 feet, okay? Bring it back, put it on a stand. That's my first tip. You don't need to make it bigger than it needs to be for the situation. Make it the exact distance you need for the situation. No more, no less. Second one, your recorder setup. Are you doing this gigantic audio bag? I mean, it's just a boom on a stand. You can do something like the, the Deity HDTX. It's just a recorder. You pop it onto the back of your boom pole, hit record. And when it comes to also intimidation and making people feel comfortable that aren't normally be on camera, a lot of that falls on your director and your producer. A good director and producer can just start talking to someone. And with a couple of cues uh, to the camera crew to kind of tell your camera person, start recording tell your sound person start recording and then just trusting that they understood what you just did so that there's not a whole big deal like okay roll tape sound speeds like all these kinds of things that we normally do on a film set if you're not used to it it can be very intimidating and then when the interview's over and you're like oh we've been rolling the whole time no, oh, it's over? Cool, that was easy. When you get that kind of relationship with your crew, it can be a great process and work so fast, so quickly, and so seamlessly to get people feel natural on camera. Yeah, we've come back to this uh, a million times every time it comes up with some sort of thing on set that deals with comfortability. I think communication is always the most important thing. So. Number one. Yeah. Cool. So I've now got a question for you, Steve. Is it better to have an omnidirectional or unidirectional, quote unquote, cardioid lavalier microphone and why uh, i think it would come down to a use base mm -hmm. but for the most part uh 90 of the time you're going to want an omnidirectional lavalier microphone for two reasons the, the main reason is just availability uh they are mostly produced as omni mics do you own a cardioid lav i know i've purchased one in my life and I know I've used one. Oddly enough, they weren't the same one. Fair enough. Point being, uh, not many people have them. You'd probably have to go rent one or find some specialty shop. So it is a specialty item and it's it's a lot of effort. So the, the second thing besides availability is just use case, how you would actually use it, the functionality of an omnidirectional lavalier. The way you mount these things, it gives you way more options. Yeah. Uh, you're gonna have to deal with all kinds of situations, collars, uh, bow ties, necklaces. A lot of the times that means you'll have to spin the mic around to and finagle it to get the best sound yeah. and sometimes that means pointing it directly down and you'll still be able to capture the person's voice with an omni lav with cardioid lav two directional it's not going to work out well i mean the cardioid it's really your only mountain what like like that right and like i said in my career i've only done that once so highly specialized maybe if you're in a totally controlled environment like on a talk show or some sort of newsroom maybe you'd end up using that because it, it would be more directional so you'd have less outside noise to deal with but for the most part omnidirectional off cool so what kind of question now do you have for me federico banos asks how would you approach recording a show like netflix's the floor is lava where body packs can hurt contestants if they fall on them and when they lose, they fall in water. So I actually know the exact answer and I know who did the post sound design for the show. I can give you a heads up. A lot of it is sound design. So those impact sounds, all that kind of stuff, they sound awesome. And it's because they're supposed to, uh, it's fake. It's real, it's reality. It's reality and a lot of love from post. So the impacts aren't really as hard as you actually think they are. Uh, they definitely have been enhanced through a lot of Foley work and sound design and sweetening. The whole show is done actually on a micro lavalier on the contestant. The waterproof transmitter that they're using is the Electrosonics WM transmitter. So it's a very specialty transmitter. It does a very good job. It's a little on the hard side, but the liquid they're falling into is also not water. It is actually vegetable oil added with food coloring and some other dyes. Problem is all that stuff combined and sitting there for a whole season smelled terribly. And they actually had to mix in bubblegum flavor to the actual slime. 
So it's this weird slime kind of stuff. It's not just basic water. As soon as it hits you, whatever the material is, that oil starts to immediately break down all the glue in the lavaliers, all the rubber, because it's all oil soluble. And oil soluble stuff means, you know, you just, if you clean something with oil, the oil is gonna get rid of it. Kind of like water, sugar dissolves in water, glue will dissolve in oil. So as soon as they fell in, they immediately were having to rip those lavaliers off the contestants and start stripping and cleaning all that oil because none of it could be left on the lava. And they had the whole thing done up in Ursa straps around the contestants. So they were hidden away. If I were to do the show, I probably would not have selected either the lava they selected or the transmitter. I probably would have gone with the Q5X player's mic because we actually have some WLOV micros out with the NBA. It actually sits in a pocket right here underneath the NBA player's armpit. So if they fall, if they get fouled, all kind of stuff, and they hit it, the battery pack and the circuit board are separate and they flex and they're just can coat it in the soft rubber texture. And then it's also waterproof. The problem is they're like $3,000 a piece. Oh, it's a little pricey, but that's the one I would have gone with. It's the one that was developed for the NBA. It's a real funny situation, something that no one would ever find themselves in normally. So probably a yeah. thousand people would come up with a thousand different answers. That's mine. Hey, it sounds like this show is as dangerous for the microphones as it is for the contestants. Absolutely. Oh no! my God. So on that note, I've got a dangerous question for <laughs> the construction. It is dangerous. And now I've got something just equally as dangerous for you. And that is this question from Curtis Judd. And that is this. How would you mic an exercise or yoga show? Well, you're not going to use a boom. No. To start. The distance is going to be here. And now I'm down here on the floor. And I'm back up. The distance is tough. Uh, you're going to have a lot of wide shots to see like the whole class often. And you don't want to see the boom there. Uh, also, people are flailing their arms around doing jumping jacks and whatnot. You don't want to get whacked in the boom with a with a stray arm. They're doing what not? Jumping jacks. Look it up. <laughs> I'm not doing one of those. Uh, the best option is a headset mic, which is going to be visible, but that's fine because it's kind of iconic in this realm of videos. Like, you know, the in it's the instructor has, is the one with this, like, you know, Richard Simmons, Britney Spears, like. I mean, they're the ones in charge because they are wearing the mic. They got a face love. A uh, face love. That's what they should call them. That's Deity it. face love. The Deity coming, face uh, love. Next summer. Uh, if you're using like a regular lav, uh, basically on someone's lapel where you would usually mount it, you're going to have a lot of issues. Uh, breathing might be weird. Uh, people doing sit ups or moving their head is going to change this distance. Yeah, I mean, and then you're going to have. Start talking like this, and all of a sudden you're talking like this. And I mean, even this right here, probably you could hear the difference in my voice. Right. Imagine that for 30 minutes while you're trying to work out. We should be wearing headset lavs, mics, face loves. Face lobs. Yeah, we're calling them face lobs now. So you're going to have a lot of things to deal with. Headset mic, best option. But you're still going to have a body pack transmitter that you need to hide. Yeah, where are you going to hide it, Steve? The most common place in one of these shows is probably going to be on the person's back between their shoulder blades. So a little bit higher up than like the small of their back. It's one of the most concealed spots. You're not going to see it very often. If the instructor has longer hair, the hair over the back will cover it. If the person's wearing a sports bra, you can probably very securely pin that to the top there. Otherwise, there is an Ursa strap or other sort of accessories that'll hold the transmitter in place. And it's very secure. Even if you're doing jumping jacks, whatever, it's going to be fine. In a lot of other situations, people will use pants to hide these transmitters, either in a pocket or clipped on a waistband. They're rigid. If you're wearing jeans, it's very sturdy. But in the workout world, a lot of people wearing yoga pants, some sort of like mesh clothing. It's not going to have the same rigidity and you want to have more yeah. solid of a, a place to clip these things. They're heavy. You're moving. You're jumping. You don't want to have an embarrassing thing or a booty flash. <laughs> I said it. Well, I think after saying the word booty, we probably should wrap it up. And that is to say, if you do like this kind of content, hit the subscribe button down below. If you want to be one of those people that post the word first or 360p club, you got to hit that bell for notifications so you can find out every single week when we post new videos because we are a weekly show here. And if you want to be a part of the mailbag, Steve, how can they join the mailbag club? The best way would be leaving a comment with the hashtag mailbag. Uh, yeah. Then it's super easy for us to look through those comments, find your great question, and then you have a good chance of winning. Uh, a VLOV. Honestly, your odds of winning a VLOV here in the comment section, much higher than any other contest we hold. I'm just going to say that. That's true. That's very true. That's true. The amount of entries, very low. The amount of winners, very high. And that kind of does wrap it up for us. I am Andrew from Deity Microphones. He is Deity Steve on Twitter. If you do want to watch more content like this over here to my side, we've got some links over there. You can actually watch some stuff. If you like this mailbag, we're probably going to put a couple more mailbag episodes over there. And we just want to say thank you for watching this video. Thanks.